Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2021-22 season. My name is Dan and we have got for you another team selection video. This week it's for Game Week 5. We're going to go through over my Game Week 4 scores. We're going to have a look at how I'm going to line up for Game Week 5. We're going to choose my captain and of course do my transfers as well, all in this video. So hopefully you do enjoy this one. Please do leave a like if you are enjoying the content so far this season and also subscribe if you are new around here. And I do want to try and get somewhere towards 90,000 subscribers subscribers pretty soon. I think we can do it guys but I can only do it with your help. Now before we start the video a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video which is of course One Football, the regular sponsors of this series which is a great app, mobile app slash website for basically all things football. You can check out scores, lineups, uh, goals uh, as they go in, uh, the stats from the games, so much stuff and there's also kind of news articles on there but it's super super useful when there's a lot of football going on for example if there's European football or uh, you know Europa League football or Premier League football that you're not watching maybe Championship football it's great to catch up on games that you're not watching so I do recommend it for you guys and it's completely free. So first of all, let's have a look at my scores from game week four. You can see here that I've actually dropped in rank down from 2,903 down to 5,783rd, which is, you know, it's a little bit disappointing. Of course, it's a little bit disappointing. It's, it's a bit of a weird week, though, because I don't fully know how to feel, because if I got just one more point this game week, um, I actually wouldn't have had a, a red arrow at all. I would have been around the same rank, maybe even a slight green arrow. I've made, maybe gone up something like 50 places if I got just one more point so it was super super tight up there so I can't I, don't, I feel like I shouldn't be beating myself up too much so, you know the fact that I've stayed so tight to the top uh, so competitive you know every single week is a really good thing and I need to try and be a bit bit positive about it and not feel too negatively about the fact that I have gone down in, in, in places because ultimately I've gone down you know under 3,000 places and on any normal game week if you go down uh, you know less than 3,000 places that's basically staying in the same place. You know, if you're around the 100,000 rank mark, you've basically stayed in the same place there, haven't you? And I kind of need to try and view it in that way. So although I am disappointed, it's kind of like, oh, it's, it's, not, it's nice having green hour after green hour after green hour. You can't have it every week, particularly when you're this high up in the rank. So I kind of just got to take this one on the chin, and that's absolutely fine. I did, of course, take a minus four at the end of last week. And if I hadn't taken that minus four, then, you know, perhaps we'd be having a different conversation. Maybe I'd be as high as, you know, 2,000, 1,500. I'd be something like that if I hadn't taken that minus four. But... At the same time, I do really still feel that the minus four is, was justified. I took out Wilson, of course, and brought in Jimenez. Of course, Jimenez didn't perform in this particular game week, but Wilson, I kind of suspected he was going to be out for more than one game week. It turns out that actually, yes, Wilson's not going to be available for this weekend's game against Leeds either. So yeah, there's kind of a, an ongoing issue there. So I, I still feel like I made the right decision to take a minus four. I think I made some really good transfers with uh, bringing in Ronaldo and Jota. Ronaldo, straight away captain, absolutely smashed. I'm sure a lot of you guys have a Ronaldo as well. Maybe you captained him as well last game. Maybe you brought him in as well. And you're probably going to feel super, super hyped and feel like you got a really good score as well. Um, Jota, although he didn't perform immediately uh, on the first week of him coming into my team, uh, I feel like even though he didn't get the points, he played really well. And on another day, he gets a real nice haul there. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he can produce in the future. So overall, I think the score that I got was a good score, a very, very strong score. But it just... When, when, I guess when you're in the top 10,000 players, even a good score is not always going to get you a green arrow. And, you know, I should try and be positive that I'm still in there. I'm still staying competitively, uh, staying competitive. It's not like I've dropped out of the top 10K. It's not like I've dropped loads of places. I haven't really. I've only really dropped kind of one point this game week. And uh, I think the minus four that I took last week is going to, well, we're going to find out whether it pays off or not over the next couple of game weeks rather than just trying to judge it on one game week. Okay, I'm just going to line up my players, how I um, who I have so far uh, right now, and then we'll talk about transfers uh, and, and how we could potentially move things around after I've put all the players on the pitch. Um, so first of all, let's just show you what I've got now to work with, and we can go from there. Um, one free transfer, 0.5 in the bank. Let's see what we can do. So Sanchez is the first player I've got uh, for my team in goal. Now, a lot of people would probably look at this Leicester fixture and think, oh, actually, that's kind of a hard fixture for Brighton. But Brighton are a very, very good defensive team. They are, you know, they... they typically teams don't get a lot of 
shooting opportunities against Brighton. And what is quite nice is that Leicester have actually taken the least amount of shots of any team in the Premier League so far this season. I think they've only taken 29 shots. And I think the team that's taken the second least amount of shots is something like 39 shots. So Leicester have, have by far taken the least amount of shots in the Premier League. They also have, I think, the second lowest expected goals, um, you know, total expected goals across the season so far. So they're not actually Leicester making many chances, taking many shots on. So I do feel like even though we think of Leicester as a really good team, they've got this midweek game as well. They're maybe going to be a bit tired out from that, uh, the, uh, the Europa League game that you probably already watched by now. Um, but I feel like this is actually not a bad fixture at all for Brighton. I do think they could potentially keep a clean sheet here. So don't be too worried uh, or put off by the fact that that Brighton are playing, by Le uh, playing against Leicester. I still think it's a really good fixture. So moving on into defence, we've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, an absolute hero. You know, he's, he's just a legend. He's, he's, he's 7.5 million for a very good reason. He's outscoring every, well, pretty much every single player uh, at his price or less, no matter what position they're in, to be honest, uh, isn't he? So he's doing really, really well. Um, and he's got this excellent fixture against Crystal Palace. We know Crystal Palace uh, obviously did quite well, um, you know, against Spurs. They scored a couple of goals this, the, the, the uh, game before that. I still am not fully convinced by Crystal Palace yet, especially when they face a challenge like Liverpool. I do think the Spurs game was a kind of a slightly different scenario. You know, Spurs playing with, uh, you know, 10 men and tired legs and not having, you know, playing a left back at centre back. So that allowed Crystal Palace to take really take advantage of that situation. And I don't think they're going to have as much joy against Liverpool. So Liverpool have been, uh, you know, absolutely amazing so far this season, taking so many shots. I think they've taken more, well, had more goal scoring opportunities than any other team in the entire Premier League so far this season. So the opposite of Leicester, the anti Leicester. And Trent Alexander Arnold has been. A massive part of that creativity. He's been the most creative player in the Premier League so far. So we are going to have some more of that, hopefully a clean sheet as well. You know, clean sheet and an assist and, uh, you know, a couple of bonus points is the Trent Alexander-Arnold special and I'm hoping for another one for, uh, from him this week. We've got Luke Shaw against West Ham. Of course, West Ham are going to be lacking Antonio for this game. So maybe that is going to give uh, an opportunity for a clean sheet here uh, for Manchester United. But I have to be honest, guys, Manchester United I don't know. They they kind of seem like a team that is 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 you know not going to get too many clean sheets at the moment. So I, I'm not going to lie. Shaw is kind of on the chopping block for me. He is a you know he's not a player that I would love to have right now. I, if I was on a wild card, for example, I would think about transferring him out. But is he a priority transfer out? Probably not. Let's see what he can do against West Ham. Hopefully, the fact that Antonio is not in that team might you know dull West Ham a little bit. They were kind of dull in a way that last game against uh, against uh, Southampton, wasn't it? So uh, yeah, hopefully we can get a clean sheet out of this. But I'm not massively confident. Um, it's just I just hope that Shaw you know racks up those bonus points, keeps going with his creativity and stuff like that, which would be quite nice. We've got Luke Ailing next, who plays against Newcastle and Newcastle without Wilson. So we've got another defender playing against a team that will be lacking their star striker. So again, maybe there's possibility for clean sheets there, but I'm not going to be too confident with Leeds whatsoever because they have been pretty shocking defensively so far this season. I think only, well, I, I would say, you know, looking at the stats, looking at the games and stuff, I would say that Leeds have probably been about the second worst defence in the league so far, um, you know, just behind uh, Newcastle, who have definitely been the worst. Uh, so yeah, I, I think uh, there there's some flaws here, but maybe the fact that there's not Will, uh, you know, there's no Wilson. Maybe the fact that that Newcastle have kind of been a little bit wasteful. I'm praying that we can get a lucky clean sheet here from Ailing, or maybe uh, I do kind of think that Ailing might have to play at centre back because of the uh, lack of centre backs at Leeds. I don't know how this is going to go, but it's a good fixture, right? And this is why I had Luke Ailing in my team in the first place for fixtures like this. But another player I'm not 100% confident in. Uh, but you know, it's not it's not the end of the world. And finally, we're going to finish off the defence with Duffy. Yes, we are going for at the back this week um, uh, you know guys that, that I, I do have uh, Antonio in my team obviously so uh, the fact that I do have Antonio is, is going to mean that, that he's going to be on the bench right now so as such I have to play one of my bench players and Duffy is the obvious guy for me like I said I, I, do, I don't think this Leicester fixture is as bad as 
you know, people might think on the face of it, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, Duffy, I, I've liked so far this season. I think he is going to keep his, his uh, place there in, in that uh, Bryson team. Bryson doing really well defensively, as they did last season. And, they're, you know, they're, they're getting results as well. So, good on them. Hopefully, Duffy can continue to do some good stuff. Um, hopefully, this week, though, he doesn't get a yellow card. He gets a clean sheet, but no yellow card. Maybe a couple of bonus points. And you never know. He could even score a cheeky header from a corner as well. That would be the dream, wouldn't it, guys? That would be amazing. But anyway, moving on into midfield. And I've got Mo Salah here against Chris. Crystal Palace. Um, this seems like a, a really obvious one. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, absolute amazing players I have. Mo Salah at home against Crystal Palace, you know, who have been like a bit of a dodgy team for a long time now. And we don't really know how Crystal Palace are going to perform. They've kind of been a little bit... They've had the ups and downs so far this season. But what we do know is that Salah has had his ups and ups this season. He's been phenomenal so far. Um, again, he's just an absolute FPL royalty. And this home game against Crystal Palace is, is a, 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 an amazing opportunity. But we've all got Salah anyway. So uh, we won't talk about him too much. We know how good he is. But I am going to talk about the double up with Jossa. Because I have got Jossa in my team as well. Again, to play Crystal Palace. Like I said last week, I felt that he was really, really unlucky. Um, you know, Mane wasting a few of the chances that Jota had created. And, you know, maybe some of the passing was not there from, uh, you know, I don't want to blame Mane, but, um, you know, on a, on a different day, Jota does really well, um, doesn't he? Uh, for me now, I believe he's still going to be out. Um, I've, well, there's not been a Liverpool press conference yet, so I don't know the full extent of the Firmino situation at this present moment, but I'm sure we'll find that out tomorrow. Um, but Jota... When he plays, he usually goes toe to toe with premium players in terms of points output. You know, his points per minute, you know, the shots he takes per minute, the, the uh, chances he creates per minute, absolutely amazing. And, you know, I think although he blanked last game week, he showed some really, really nice signs of points to come. Really nice signs. So hopefully in this uh, in this game against Crystal Palace, those points are going to come indeed. So let's see what happens there. But I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident about Jota. I still think he's a really, really good pick to have. And we've got Greenwood here as well, um, who's been an absolute... Uh, uh, f phenomenon for my fantasy team. He's been a phenomenon in you know football in general. To be fair, um, he's doing really well. I'm really, really. Um, I, I know. I, I'm kind of hoping that that with Cristiano Ronaldo coming into the team, it doesn't affect. Greenwood's numbers too much I think it is going to affect Greenwood's numbers a little bit because Greenwood was kind of the main you know the main goal threat I guess so far this season for for Manchester United he was known at Manchester United as being their best finisher I guess not anymore now that Cristiano Ronaldo's on the scene so yeah I, I think Greenwood is going to play keep his place because he is still playing really well he is still taking shots he took a couple of shots um last game of course one of them end, uh, you know hit the post and ended up with a Ronaldo tap in so Greenwood is, is still going to be there and there about. Maybe he will get a few opportunities if Ronaldo creates a bit of space for him or, you know, or he has a, a Ronaldo two pass to him, maybe get the assist and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I think Greenwood is still a pretty good pick. But again, he's one of those players who I think maybe um, I'm not really sure how he's, how he's going to play out over the, over the next couple of games, particularly when Manchester United's fixtures um, do go a bit sour. But West Ham have been pretty bad at, at keeping uh, their defence sharp. Maybe that's mostly because of, uh, you know, some defensive mistakes. And they have got um, the new defence. And uh, Zuma coming coming into their team now. He's starting in the Europa League, so maybe that's going to help West Ham a little bit. But I'm still pretty confident that uh, Manchester United can go there and, and, and get a result. And I hope Greenwood is going to be involved in the scoreline. And finally, we've got Ben Rama in midfield. Um, home against Manchester United. Um, you know, on the opposite side of, of the Greenwood. Um, ben Rama, he is uh, he's rested midweek. I guess that's a good thing. Um, but it is a difficult game against Manchester United here. And without Antonio to pass to, without Antonio to create that space... I don't know how West Ham are going to perform in this game. I'm really, really curious to see how they're going to set up. I mean, they don't actually have another recognised striker in their team. Maybe, you know, maybe Jared Bowen goes there. Maybe Yarmolenko goes there. Not really sure, to be honest. So we will have to see how they line up. But um, yeah, how how well is uh, you know a West Ham going to do against Manchester United? I'm not sure. I do think they will. They can they can very easily score against them. Am I confident that Ben Rama is going to be involved in that? No, I'm not. So, okay, yeah, we have got another player here who is potentially on the chopping block for this particular game. I obviously, I like the, the game after that. I like the game against Leeds for West Ham, but this one I, I don't really like. Um, so up front, we've got Cristiano Ronaldo. Amazing, <laughs> two goals in his first game um, back in the Premier League. Absolutely amazing. I can't just, I just can't wait to watch him every single week in the Premier League and to have him in your in your fantasy team. Obviously, uh, in the UK, we couldn't actually watch the game live in this country. Um, 
you, you can look it up if you're interested in why, uh, you know, in the UK, we can't watch the 3 p.m. games, but I couldn't watch it live. So I'm really kind of looking forward to, you know, just the whole season of hopefully getting to see watch Ronaldo a little bit more. Um, and to have him in your fantasy team as well is absolutely amazing. So this fixture against West Ham, you really do back Ronaldo to score in this one. Although West Ham's defensive numbers are pretty good, they are they are still conceding goals. They're still letting their goals slip, unfortunately, West Ham. So, um, yeah, Ronaldo, this has got to be, a, you know, another good hunting ground for him going to uh, West Ham Stadium and uh, hopefully getting some more points for all of us. And then finally up front, I've got Jimenez here. Disappointing first game in my team last week. Only one point. He obviously got a yellow card, so he was a one-pointer. But he looked pretty good he created a really good chance for Semedo to score he took uh he took a, a really good headed chance as well which uh, you know you look at it and you think usually Jimenez is going to bury that it was a really really good clear chance for him so you know creating a chance taking on a really good shot and you know on another day he scores and gets an assist so look these are these are positives as, as far as I'm concerned you know although they didn't I didn't get the points we have to look at more than just the points and how the players performed and I certainly I am a little bit worried, I guess, about Jimenez because he hasn't scored yet this season. But I, I need to, I need to try and make sure that I, I don't get too worried. We've got a nice game against Brentford here. Um, Brentford have been kind of tough, but I do think that Wolves can do it. You know, now they've got these slightly easier fixtures, I think they can do it. So, um, yeah, let's see what Jimenez does basically. But there's a nice run of fixtures here, and I think he can do the business. So. Uh, um, yeah, just fingers crossed that he, he, he uh, at least doesn't get a yellow card. But no, I do think he can do really well in this game. Um, he's a quality player and and he, he fully, he's fully capable of it. So on my bench, quickly, we've got Steele, boring. Uh, Omar Bamadeli against Watford. I guess that's not too bad of a fixture, but do we, any, any of us trust Norwich's defence? Probably not. Um, we've got Brownhill against Arsenal. Brownhill's become a bit of a one-point bandit, really, hasn't he? He's getting one point every week because of his yellow cards. Um, so yeah, a little bit disappointing there. Maybe uh, we've gone for the wrong... 4.5 million midfielder at the beginning of the season but you know if you're going to make a mistake um, in your game week one team selections having your 4.5 million bench midfielder being the bad choice is probably a good place to make a mistake right um, but it's not the end of the world and of course we've got Antonio who is um, unfortunately suspended for one game week only uh, and to be fair it's a game week where it's a tough fixture anyway against Manchester United where I probably wouldn't expect Antonio to get too much out of that game Anyway, to be fair, so you know, if he was going to miss any game, or if you know, out of the opening ten fixtures, or I don't know about ten fixtures, but you know, seven, eight fixtures, um, this is probably the one you would want him to miss if he had to miss one. If that makes sense, guys. So uh, yeah, he's still the top scoring player in the in the uh, in the Premier League uh, in the fa in fantasy, you know, the, the, as well. He's putting out the best stats, you know, taking only the second the second most shots of any player, you know, creating the second most chances of any player as well in terms of expected goals and expected assists. He is phenomenal. His stats are phenomenal. And you're probably going to get the idea what I'm kind of leaning towards here. I really don't want to get rid of Antonio, which is kind of problematic because, you know, the real obvious move this week is to get Bamford into your team. How am I going to get Bamford into my team? Well, I'm not going to take out Ronaldo. I don't really want to take out Jimenez. He's only just come into my team and I, I, I want to give him a chance at least. And I think he can do some really good stuff over the next few game weeks. Um, do I take out Antonio? If I do, I lose a lot of money by doing that. Um, so it is, uh, I, I obviously, I, I, only, I pay, only paid 7.5 for Antonio. He's now 7.9 million. So I would lose money if I took him out. Would I want him to get him back in? Yes, absolutely. I really want Antonio for this uh, the, the away game against Leeds in game week six. I really want Antonio for that game. Um, it's an amazing fixture for him. So I don't want to get rid of Antonio. I really don't. I think it's a bad move for me. I, I think I've got to be patient on this one. You know, I can cover Antonio for one game week by going for Duffy and just um, just using Duffy from the, from the bench instead. When you look at that, Leicester haven't have have not been a particularly good attacking team so far this season. You, you, and you kind of understand that maybe Brighton are a pretty good defensive team. Then maybe Duffy is not the worst player in the world to have off your bench, you know, as cover for just one game week. And, and Antonio, in a way, is going to turn into a little bit of a differential. A lot of people, uh, whereas before, everyone had Antonio, or certainly around my rank, everyone has Antonio. Going into game week uh, six, 
the game against Leeds, Antonio could easily bag a couple of goals, but a lot of people won't have Antonio, so it would lead to, you know, real nice rank swings, really nice rank increases, so I'm thinking about it so much, um, obviously you guys are going to be shouting at your screen, Dan, you've got to get Bamford, but I think Antonio is a player that I'm so, I'm so keen to keep that I'm not going to make that move, I'm not going to do that move, and I'm going to do a similar move, uh, I'm actually going to take uh, Ben Rama out, and I'm going to replace him with Rafinha. There's lots of reasons why I'm doing this. Um, for, first and foremost, with Ben Rama, it's not an ideal fixture for Ben Rama. As we know, Manchester United is going to be a diff difficult game for Ben Rama. There is going to be a little bit of rotation. There's going to be early substitutions off for a player like Ben Rama, especially with these with the, all the midweek fixtures and the new kind of uh, wait, uh, you know all these supporting striker players in the in the West Ham team you know like, even when we talk about Yarmolenko um, Lanzini neither of those have played uh, too much football so far um, and then you've got uh, Vlasic for nows Bowen, oh, they, they have so many players in these positions so there's going to be rotation at some point particularly when the fixtures get hot and heavy so Ben Rama is sometimes going to get subbed off early, like he did last game week. He is sometimes going to get rotated, and we kind of, I kind of got to accept that. Um, and because of that, I think his time has maybe come. I think he's a safe player to transfer out. And if I want a Leeds attacker and I can't get Bamford, I need to get Rafinha. And who, who I've got to sacrifice one of my midfielders. And the player that I'm going to sacrifice is going to. It's, it's, it's got to be Ben Rama. I mean, I, I wouldn't even think about sacrificing any of the other guys. Salah, no way. Jota, no way. Doing so well. Greenwood as well. Oh, amazing. Now, Ben Rama does seem to be slightly on the decline. He's, he's, he's not got the same form um, as he did in his opening couple of games. So I'm kind of happy to sacrifice him um, in order to make a really nice move to Rafinha. And another interesting point is I know I really wanted to target this Newcastle game with, by getting some getting the Leeds player in. And I've kind of been looking at uh, some of the statistics and watching some highlights and stuff. And it does seem like Newcastle, obviously they're conceding so many chances, but the chances that they're conceding all seem to be on the wing. All of the chances they, they're conceded are, are, are kind of from the wing. So kind of think about um, El Yunassi um, uh, when he, uh, for Southampton when he played against Newcastle. Did really well. Got some really good shooting opportunities. El Ghazi, um, you know, I, 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 I know he, he scored a penalty, but he took another a couple of shots as well there against Newcastle. So that was... Um, Again, from the wing. And yeah, th th there's just been a few opportunities. That, you know, you think about that Greenwood shot that hit the post that, uh, that led to the Ronaldo tap-in. That, again, was coming off, off the right wing, cutting inside. So I, I, it, when you watch the highlights, when you look at the stats, when you look at who is getting the most opportunities against Newcastle, it does seem to be the wingers rather than the, the striker. So... Does that lend itself further that for, for actually going for Rafinha? It might even be a better move than to go for Bamford. Maybe. I don't know. I'm Obviously, I'm really scared about not owning Bamford. But maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm talking this in a little bit. But Rafinha is a really, really, really good transfer. A really good player to bring into to your team this week. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Now, guys, uh, we will do captains quickly to wrap this video up. And uh, the captain is going to be Mo Salah. It's really super obvious. And, you know, uh, making the 100 experts video that I made yesterday kind of confirmed that for me that I definitely do want to go for Salah as captain. It's the right move, particularly, you know, at, at my rank. I just got to try and uh, not go, go too out there with, with a captaincy shout. And to be fair, I feel like this is one of those game weeks where anything other than Salah is kind of a little bit out there. Maybe you'll say Ronaldo's a good shout. Maybe you'll say Lukaku's a good shout. And I would agree with you there. Um, but Salah definitely seems like the best shout to me. So that's why I'm not going to talk about it too much because Salah, Salah, when he plays at home, you know, how well he's done so far this season. There's so many reasons there. And uh, he's, he's a very obvious player to go for as your captain, isn't it? So I'm not going to talk about it too much. But he is going to be my captain. And then we'll stick the vice captain on Ronaldo because he's Ronaldo. And, and you know, like I said, the the other good captain options, I guess, are like Ronaldo or, um, you know, Lukaku. Who, those are the other two players I'd probably consider if I had them. I do have Ronaldo. So let's put the vice captain on him at least. And there we go. There's my team. I think it's looking pretty good for this game week. I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with the transfer move as well. And, you know, it's not all that bad considering I am holding Antonio on my bench. I think that's going to pay off for me in the following game week. So I'm going to be a bit patient here and play with four at the back. Hopefully, Brighton keep a clean sheet. And if so, I'm laughing. I'm happy. Happy days. There we go. So there we go, guys. That is the end of the video. Slightly longer one today. I know I went on for quite a lot, but there's so much to talk about. It always is. Uh, there you go. 
that is it. So if you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a like. I would massively appreciate that. It really does help out the channel. And of course, subscribe if you're new around here as well. Um, yeah, I really appreciate that too. Guys, I made loads of videos this week. If you want more Game Week 5 related content, do go check out my channel and just watch some videos if you like. There's loads of stuff there. Hopefully, it's really going to help you out going into this game week. Um, and aside from that, that's pretty much it. I'll see you on the deadline stream one hour before the FPL deadline. Look forward to seeing you guys there and I'll see you later, mates. Bye-bye.